I was just thinking about how much uh, great support for open source testing tools uh, we're getting from, from corporate, uh, from corporations basically. Uh, and continuing on that trend, uh, we have uh, Moet, uh, presented by Ng Ong. Hello everyone, my name is Ng Ong and I'm a quality engineer with Intuit. Uh, today I will talk about Moet. Um, I don't have much to talk about Moet actually, but I want to also um, share a lot about the experiences I've gained, the learnings I gained from testing different applications, different features, ranging from hardware to you know, the UI specifics. So before I dive into the details of Moet, I want to talk a little bit more about the mobile technologies that are in the industry. And as you know, there's so many different ones, and which one do you choose? Um, so before we go into the, you know, what the tools are, we need to understand um, what are different types of technologies. And from my experience from testing you know, with different tools, uh, they are, you, know, you can really split the tools into two categories, instrumented and non-instrumented. And if you understand what instrumented means, you really do understand, you would not understand what non-instrumentation means because they are really complements of each other. They are, the, it's, you can think of it as a flip of a coin. One is on one side and the other is on the other side. So what is instrumentation? There are a strict form of instrumentation and a less strict form. The strict form requires that your tests are compiled uh, with your application and is also installed and launched with your application. So one good example is Robotium. So Robotium requires you to um, you know, have the source code of your application, the source code on the test, and your tests are actually built, compiled, and launched with your application, right? So this is a strict form of instrumentation. There's a similar form of instrumentation that requires some hooks into your application. Uh, and this and one example is accessibility API in iOS. So what you do is we, with that API, um, it allows you to drive your application with that API. And it, it is also a form of instrumentation because of this, this hooks and that your tests do need to be run you know, with your app. And in both approaches, the commonality is that only one app can be tested at any one time, which means you cannot test with multiple apps. You can't switch. You can do um, you know, um, you know, more complex testing. And it's also known as a white box technique uh, because you know the elements type, you know the elements name, you know the elements content. So it's really a white box approach versus a non-instrumentation. You just, you know, it, you, you're really looking at image space and it's considered more black box approach. So now, with these two different techniques, um, you know, there are advantages of both techniques. It's not like, you know, you know, you gotta go with one approach versus the other approach. It really depends on the application and the test. And, and so what are the advantages of these two techniques? For non-instrumentation, you could see that, you know, because you don't need the source code on the test. You can basically, be, you know, have a test framework that is uh, device agnostic. Uh, you know, tests harness test language agnostic. Um, you can test with multiple applications. And a key advantage I find that if you have a custom composite UI element, meaning that you have, say, for example, a table view, a custom table view, and you have um, elements in within that table view like radio buttons, text fields. In instrumented approach, you won't be able to see anything inside that composite element. So that's one advantage that we find that with non-instrumentation approach is a, is a great advantage. Um, other cases like you need uh, to call um, different libraries, image API libraries, you need device hardware libraries, Bluetooth libraries, um, you know, different APIs that you need to validate. You need to validate against database before you can continue with your testing. So we, we found a lot of you know, different scenarios that we can't test with instrumentation approach and that's really, um, advantages to, to understand what is a non-instrumentation approach you can use. Um, and so the flip side of it is that instrumentation, you hear a lot about all the great tools today. And um, the recommendation is always, you know, if you need to, you know, access your elements, you need to verify text, always go with instrumentation approach because then you get the exact text that you need to validate. For example, in, in our case, you know, Intuit is big on financial applications, and we need to validate the uh, user's account balance, the user's, you know, uh, bill payments. Uh, we can't, uh, you know, we can't uh, rely on an image recognition approach. I guess we could, unless it's, you know, really stable, but we, you know, you know, I think I'll feel, I'll sleep better at night that I know that the exact content I get from the text-based approach uh, with instrumentation is correct, isn't it? and it's exact. So that, that is one, one of the examples you go with instrumentation approach. So to make it easier for you with this pie chart here, um, it, 
it makes you understand why, you know, the different approaches you could use for instrumentation. The great advantage is, you know, you have a text-based um, features you need to test. But on instrumentation, you have, you know, hardware interaction, external interaction, um, image-based features, um, in addition to your uh, custom UI elements. So understanding these, you know, the characteristics of the application is key. And now you want to know what are the tools available. And this has been covered previously as well. But I just, you know, give an idea uh, by grouping the uh, tools under the different mobile OS. Uh, what are your choices are? So, so now then we we'll talk about more about Moet now because Moet is, you, you notice this in the column of non-instrumentation. Uh, the reason why it started non-instrumentation is because it's, Moet started about a few years ago, about three years ago, uh, when, you know, when we had to test with BlackBerry applications, uh, and we had to write it in Python. So now today, uh, Moet is supported in Java um, for Android and iOS, and it's, on the, um, it's, it's catered just for non-instrumentation approach because we could not find a tool that can allow us to test cross-platform. Um, and so we had to come up with a, you know, a, a capability such that we can, we can use um, a common test harness, a common test language. And underneath the hood, I don't want to develop anything extra. So I harness, I could you know, pick the best tool available in the market that I can plug in that, uh, that the user will, 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 will not know um, that the, tool, the exact tool you're using to drive your applications. So in this case, we, I'm actually using securely a monkey runner under the hood, and I can show you a little bit uh, uh, what the code is like. So that brings us to Moet. So what is Moet? The three, three key things. It's the first thing about design. How do I design my app such that I can have my test cases run on different, uh, different devices and also um, you know, even different resolutions? Um, so the key, key thing, first thing is that you, know, to, you could use interfaces, as, as we talked earlier um, the, um, about Frank, that you know, interfaces, creational pattern, allows you to create you know, uh, a business logic API, for example, in a test login with a username and password. So this is your interface. This is a interface's login with st two strings, you know, user, and, you know, user and password strings. And based on that, then you would have another abstraction, which is how you implement that. And that implementation can vary from iPhone to Android, BlackBerry, uh, Windows, and so on and so forth. And so this abstraction is, is based on also a, a different layer, which is a device abstraction. So what is device abstraction? Um, how do you interact with the device? How do you touch the device? How do you enter? Um, that is also being extracted out. Because in that way, if you implement um, any libraries based on these APIs, how you, you know, touch X and Y on this phone, on a mobile phone, um, you can actually substitute it with, say, today I want to use uh, Android uh, Monkey Runner. Maybe tomorrow there's a better API, better Java file that you can use. So you can just swap it out because you have the commonality, you have a common interface that you can use. And this is actually what happened. Um, uh, before Monkey Runner came about, there was just ADB events, and basically I had to write the library based on ADB events. But when Monkey Runner came about, you just swap out you know, the entire library, you just threw it away, and then just swap it in with a Monkey Runner library. So it was, it was, um, it was like the, the, the whole idea that best, the best tool wins, really. So the second thing is once you have all these two layers of abstraction, your application abstraction as, as, as well as device layer abstraction, abstraction, you could think about how you can reuse all your tests if they're device independent. Um, and, and the next key thing is also you think about using only one test harness. And in this case, right now, we're using Java. Um, you, and I, I only use one simple ID. And I can, with a switch of a property file, uh, a value in a property file, say device is equals to iPhone, uh, and I, I, I'll run my test on iPhone, but if I switch the device to Android, the device, the test will actually run on Android device. Um, how does that all work? How does that all magically sort of, um, you, know, you know, happen? So the building blocks will help you sort of understand how it works. Um, so as we talked about earlier, you have the application interface. This is where you define all your business logics, like login, you know, delete an app, uh, delete your contacts, find a contact in it, for example, an address for application. Um, and then your device independent test will be based on these interface API methods. So what happens during runtime? Runtime, based on the property that you specify, it will instantiate the application implementation, whether it's Android, iPhone, um, Windows, and so on and so forth. 
um, it will instantiate that, and the implementation will know what to instantiate the library down below, in the next layer below. In this case, for Android, is Monkey Runner, and iPhone, uh, for iOS right now, it's using Securely. So you, you notice that with these building blocks, uh, you actually, you can, it's pluggable. So the Monkey Runner library is pluggable, the Security library is pluggable. So you can find any you know, tool in the market and you just plug it in, and um, you, you see the magic works. So I'm going to quickly show you uh, the source code. So in this case, uh, the example of an interface for a Jasper application, and this is all in GitHub. Uh, so example interface right now, it could have an add contact, a find, and a delete contact. So if I want to implement this on a, say, what is this? Oh, let me still on. Oh, let's take a look at test. So uh, uh, a device independent test uh, uses what we use is JUnit, um, test ng, you know, um, standard harness, and you know we don't want to invent another harness. And, um, and so, say for example, you want to add a first name only test. You just have to say create a new contact, uh, and you want to add a contact, find a contact, and delete a contact. So it's really simple as that. It, you know, something that you can really understand, uh, and also you are using the Java, um, you know, libraries and all that to help you. Um, so how do we implement that? Uh, so I have two implementations, the iPhone, the iPhone input, and as well as the Android input. And you can see that I'm actually using a set of libraries, uh, the iPhone library. Um, I can also use some image, you know, matching logic that I, you know, does some libraries. And you can see how, for example, how you implement the add contact. So you can tap an image, you can enter, you can tap on, you know, certain characters, um, and you can put in emails if there is an email, uh, and so on and so forth. So similarly on Android, you can see the similar implementation. I'm gonna go into it. Uh, but a key thing, underneath the hood, uh, we're actually using Android. Uh, you can see that for Android, I'm actually using Monkey Runner, right? And it's abstracted out from the user. So I'm actually using Android monkey runner, monkey device, you know, the image, the monkey manager, the ADB backend. So all this is sort of figure out for you and you know, it's, it's free. Um, and it's open source that you can, you can use and you can even enhance um, and so on and so forth. So for iPhone, you can see that I'm actually using all the security libraries here, right? Okay. Oops. So the second part of the presentation, uh, I want to talk about with with all the testing we've been done. Uh, there are a lot of um, new things that we need to do, uh, hope, and this is the right crowd to to speak to. Um, I want to address the wall of pain, you know, um, on Android, iOS, and in general, um, and we'll start with the first one. So Android, you know, is is probably the easiest. Um, uh, wait for us to test right now. I only have two points on it. So the pain point isn't that bad, uh, but you know it would be nice to have it fixed. Uh, for Android, it seems like it's very geeky, right? Um, if you want to test and you know uh, run a test, you know you have to know what uh, what is the base size you want to want to extend. And in fact, there's also a JUnit report test runner. It's a different um, class that you know you want to extend your test in order to get the JUnit test out of your device. Um, and you also need to figure out how you, um, if you use a snapshot image um, of the Android, and you should use it uh, because it's so much faster when you load up the emulator, uh, you actually would notice that the date of the device is being set to the day that you save the snapshot. And you need to figure out, oh, I need to actually set the date you know, to the current day and time. And you need to figure out what is the ADB command for you to do that. Um, so there's a lot more to just running your test. You need to know a lot of geeky commands. And the next thing is that the test results, the basics, the basics of uh, test execution, you need to get your test results. And how do you do that? You actually have to do a command line again to pull your device, your, your results out from a, a slash data slash and so on and so forth, you know, you know figure that out. Um, so these are the two pain points, it isn't too bad. Let's go to iOS. So this says it all, really. Um, it's, it's, um, it's the way it's designed, and uh, there's really nothing that we can I can do. Um, and then what happens? 
Yeah. When I first started working on UI automation, I was quite surprised that that's, you know, there's no test harness, right? Yeah, there's no test grouping, assertions, base test class. Uh, results are in a plist file, you know, and you have to really parse it and, and you know, make it displayable as, you know, for JNet, uh, you know, report. Um, so this is, a, you know, quite a, you know, pretty frustrating. The next thing is, you know, if you write tests, you should really, uh, you know, think about CI, you know, from the very beginning. Uh, think about how you execute your tests, you know, how do you display your results, uh, get code coverage, you know, that's like a stretch goal. Uh, and, and, you know, nothing has been, you know, really that well integrated uh, with a, having a CI plugin would be great on uh, Jenkins, right? Uh, we have a similar one in Android emulator, which I think, uh, Android emulator plugin, which, uh, you know, is highly recommended. It'd be nice to see that for iOS. So the last pain point for, um, from iOS is that, you know, I love to see an IDE plugin. Uh, you know, there's no code formatting, you know, that when you're, you know, maybe you're developing in Eclipse, or JS scripts in Eclipse, um, hopefully you're not doing that in instruments. Uh, and, you know, there's no API completion. It would be great to have all your UI automation API completion, your breakpoints, debugger, Javadoc help. Um, you know, one-click test execution, you know, this is one of the basics, right, of, of us having a productive environment to write our tests. So these are all iOS. Now let's take a look at what is general for, uh, you know, all mobile platforms. So, so if you're the forerunner of, of developing a test on different devices, different uh, problem space, uh, currently, what do you do when you have a problem? You search. You search for blogs. You search for Stack Overflow developers group. It's really painful. Every little stumbling block, you spend some time searching. Um, and, and for one example would be, you know, removing an authorization prompt. If you if you put that prompt, if you if you run with new Xcode, um, and you you kick off instruments, uh, uh, you know, you get this this prompt saying that, hey, you know. Uh, that's another process wants to take control. Uh, you want to type in your username and password. This will just totally block you from, from you know, having a, a clean run on your CI environment. And what I really like to see is a, you know, a, a, a site that has a uh, tips and tricks and not just problems. Uh, people has already yeah. solved it. Uh, you know, uh, community-driven effort, and that's what this whole group is about, right? Uh, the next thing. What I really liked about JUnit um, is it has it, it is decoupled from your test execution, right? It, it, that XML file uh, can be used by different uh, test tools, and as long as you display it in the uh, the schema that JUnit XML report is, you can actually dis you can you know you can see the same reporting style. Uh, so what I like to see is actually a mobile test reporting uh, style um, that we can, you know, enhance a, you know, a genuine report or, you know, come up with a new report that has screenshots, device logs, device detection, and so on and so forth. Right. So the other thing is, it's just so ironic that mobile testing is anything but mobile. <laughs> you're testing tethered, you're testing, um, you know, um, simulators, you're not really mobile, right? Um, it's kind of ironic. Uh, I know that there are solutions, uh, but I would really like to see something which is a test tool independent component that um, any test tool, if you're using, you know, using different tools, and you can just plug in, you know, um, you know the capability for you to test uh, remotely and test in Wi-Fi over the air um, installation without having to be tied to a, you know, a framework or a, you know, a test tool. Um, the final thing is, you've seen that earlier, is I don't want to, you know, have another proprietary language and, you know, um, really like to see an open source test harness and language uh, for instrumented tests, non-instrumented tests, and hybrid apps. So what does this mean uh, for MOAD, really? Um, so the next steps for MOAD, or um, it could morph into a different tool, is that I would like to start with first uh, tackling a uh, ID, having an ID plugin, uh, such that you know without changing a proper, you know, having a geeky way for you to just you know, ex you know, change your test execution. But you know, you can ha easily have a drop down to say, hey, I want to run on iPhone, you know, and it would just execute on iPhone without having you to do um, you know complex 
uh, command line or you know property change and so on and so forth. So the idea is that the next steps will be to to make it more seamless and painless uh, as we move towards you know um, from the non-instrumented to the instrumentation approach and um, drive towards a CI approach. Uh, this is a stretch goal, especially for instrumentation approach, because there's still so much flux in this area. Um, but um, this is where MOAD is heading. I think I'm on time. I know in previous talks you, you've talked about, you've actually used Sequoia under the hood. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know you did talk about instrumented versus non instrument I was mm -hmm. curious, like, did you have um, more color commentary, I guess, on mm -hmm. the the good and the good things and potentially not so good things about image-based um, testing, like Premier Premier experience, okay. how that work, and what and what's it really good for? I mean, actually, I assume there's good things. I'm yes. curious, where did you feel? Right, towards? right. Um, so when we start testing with so what we typically do is try to go with the instrumented approach first, and then we see gaps that we cannot test with an instrumented approach. Um, for example, um, you know, if we have, when we pop up a camera, for example, uh, when we test, you know, and a camera pops up, uh, and we want to click the, um, take a picture, right, the, the camera button to, in order to take a picture, we're, we're not able to see where the button is, and we actually has to, we have to randomly click, because of the different, different phones have the camera button differently, right? It could be um, different resolution, Right. So what I have to do is actually hot code. I know that a, a 40 by 800 uh, camera button would be like right at the bottom. So I sort of um, hot code the coordinates. And then I hot code the coordinates for all the different resolutions of the uh, sizes, screen sizes of the phones I, I might test it on. Uh, so this is, you know, so this is one disadvantage. If you stick with an instrumented approach, you would have to you know, hot code a lot of different values. You have to just randomly click, right? And to find out, you know, how, you know, um, to proceed the test. Uh, but if you're using a, uh, when you find you're in such a situation, you really want to go with image-based approach because then you don't really um, uh, care where that button is. You just want to click that button. So it's so much easier that way. Um, so that's one of the advantages. And also, sometimes you cannot use a text-based approach. For example, um, uh, there are, Cases for secure applications, when you test secure applications that, you know, when you log in and you're not, you, you're supposed to get an SMS message or a voice call before you can proceed to the next step, you're stuck, really. So this is called out of band testing that we do, and we have a few hundred tests based on that. And you can't go with an instrumented approach because it requires you to step on the app to do something, check the database, change the state of data before you can come back to your app. So in this case, um, you know, you definitely cannot use an instrumented approach. And we are also noticing that we, you know, the, 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 the way to test our app adequately is to have a hybrid approach, to have both instrumented and non-instrumented approach. Uh, when we pick a testing tool, one important thing we care about is if a test fail, we want to understand why it failed. Mm -hmm. I don't want to reproduce because mm -hmm. I want to see the reason from the test report. Mm -hmm. Is there an easy way? Um, one thing, another thing, the screenshot. Mm -hmm. If the test report can show me all the screenshots, that yeah. would be helpful. Yeah. Um, so part of, uh, I believe I checked in the code that, uh, that I use uh, JNIT. So I basically parse, I haven't checked in the code for uh, iOS uh, yet, but. Uh, but basically what it does is, you know, I take, a, you know, any, uh, I, I always take the last screenshot of what happens in your test and, and plug it in into a, um, into um, one of the JUnit reports in HTML. Uh, so I think I modify, I, that's a XSL style sheet. Basically I just modify it one field to actually substitute that with a screenshot. Um, you know, um, and I can point you to the, the video or, um, because that was being presented in a different conference. Uh, how you can integrate your test into CI environment and also be able to see your your errors and with screenshots or device logs and both device logs and and screenshots have been captured in the the CI environment. So. Any other questions? All right. Thank you to Ingong.